Okay, as always, glad you are back on the Investigative Journal on this, what day is it, a Wednesday? Yes, it is Wednesday, and we're here again for another hour on FirstAmendmentRadio.com. You can also get me on YouTube and uh, many other places. People pick up these shows, they're free, and uh, put them all over the place. So if you get them, tell your friends, and don't forget to go to, my, I'll put something on my YouTube where you can go to Patreon, or to my website at greganthonysjournal.wordpress.com and you can get shows going back well over 12 to 15 years regarding the Vatican-led New World Order and how the Vatican has to be put into the equation of this push towards globalism and socialism and all these terrible things to destroy America and our freedoms, the ones we have left, by the way. And uh, we try to deal with the Vatican connection to that here. You know, remember, like, the uh, you always have the connection of the Bilderbergers, you have a connection of the Mafia, but you never seem to get to the real culprits. And when I say that, I do that with a bit of experience, having lived in Rome for seven years. And I also uh, have done a lot of research on it and find that it's the biggest story never told next to the size and shape of the Earth, uh, which I consider to be not a sphere anymore. I don't think uh, we're moving at a million miles an hour and spinning around. And you know, one of the great things, let me tell you, i got a few things I want to cover before I get into a Vatican Concordat and how this is how they weasel their way into controlling governments. And we're going to do a little bit of a historical look at this so that you can, you know, when you're sitting around trying to convince people that the Vatican-led New World Order and the Vatican and Jesuits are you know, should be reckoned with, you're going to have some ammunition to use uh, because people really won't believe you. Most people don't know it, so they're really going to just consider them to be the Christians. Uh, they're just good Christians who have been infiltrated, who have just happened to have like millions of pedophile priests working for them. And then you're going to have the court system in America. Federal courts have ruled in cases that uh, priests don't work for the Vatican, so they can't be sued. And then you'll have a court in uh, the Ninth Circuit, federal court, up these brilliant judges who hide behind these black robes. God knows what they do under those robes. Um, and they rule that the Vatican doesn't even do business in the United States. Isn't that interesting? They're in the pocket of these people, and they all work together. They run to Rome because that's the richest organization in the world. Plus, they're a cult. They're satanic. And, boy, they just love that occult uh, system, don't they? They love that kind of, let's drink the blood of children. We'll get stronger. But anyway, when I was doing stories years ago in Rome and I happened to run across, you know, maybe I was in the wrong place at the wrong time or I could be considered the right place at the right time if you think knowing about this is the right thing and uh, the, the way to figure out the truth. I put it on the table only and let you do it because I'm not smart enough to get to all of it. But anyway, when I was there, maybe I was in the wrong place at the wrong time, but I happened to do uh, meet someone who was actually down in the catacombs of the Vatican, who witnessed a satanic worshiping and the bloodletting of a child. And uh, this girl uh, was a very wealthy and a very elite Italian family, northern Italian family, and this was a rite of induction. And boy, was she messed up. And I happened to meet her and learn, start learning about that satanic element of the Vatican, which I'll tell you, will not get you invited to a lot of parties in Hollywood. Unless you become like them, you know? And you go to one of those uh, dinners. Uh, remember the Pizzagate dinners with that uh, woman who, uh, well, anyway, you go look at all those crazy dinners they go to. Oh, I've even forgotten about what they are, and you probably know them, so email me, let me know. Forgotten the name of that woman uh, who had these occult, crazy satanic dinners and all these celebrities and all these Clintonites were uh, going there, Clinton and John Podesta and all these people, and that whole big Pizzagate story. All right, so what did I want to mention today? Uh, all right, yeah, I was looking, I was going, you know, you like to sweep the internet before you uh, 
wake up in the morning. You know, when you wake up in the morning, you go, what's going on in the world? So you go through the Internet, and in five minutes you know everything, and then you can go out, have your coffee, and forget about it. But anyway, some of the stories, Venezuela had a 7.3 earthquake right outside of, right up the coast of Venezuela. Haven't they been tortured enough with that socialist government there? I happen to know some people from Venezuela, and I hear that they're killing people for um, cell phones. They don't have food to eat. And socialism is great, isn't it? Oh my goodness. Just check out what's going there. I know someone that lives there, and... Uh, we had, uh, he had to send him a cell phone. And also, uh, people are starving, and there's no food on the street, no money. And so socialism really works well. Everybody's poor, living on the street. That's what socialism really is all about. And then the rich guys, they live up in their mansions, and they're all trying to steal the Venezuelan oil. So that's what's going on in Venezuela. Okay, what else is going on? Hawaii is bracing for a huge hurricane, so check that out. Haven't they been tortured enough? My God, you know, these uh, volcanoes have been erupting. Now they're going to get hit by a hurricane, and uh, my goodness, we're, it's, a fifth, you know, it's our 50th state. What is it doing way out there in the ocean? How did, uh, you know, I remember years ago I did a story about the people in Hawaii want to liberate themselves from America, secede. And this was the native Hawaiians, and boy, did they have a story. We don't hear about that much. I remember, you know, there's a group out there. Years ago, I did a story and got to know some of those people who live there and say that they don't like the American system there, and they'd rather go back to their native ways. I don't blame them. Better than socialism. But I'm leading up to socialism for a reason. Now, the major portion of the show is going to be, again, concordance. And uh, it's not about a wedding uh, or anything like that. Uh, it's, a, or it's not about the Concord jet. It's about how the Vatican gets their sneaky little dirty little stupid fingers into governments and tries to change over the way things go so they can all become this one world, beautiful one world order, globalist system. And you know how many millenniums now? Millenniums? That's what I call them. Millennials or whatever they are. These young people who really hate America. You know, they don't like it. Uh, they want socialism. They want a global world. They want open borders. They want everything just wide open. You know, I agree with them only about two hours of my week. Sometimes I go over to Mexico and have to go through on the way back, because I live on the border. On the border uh, and I like going there for a number of different reasons. And I have to sit in that border line for two hours. Now to get into Mexico, you just drive right in. They welcome you. Go, go ahead. Drive in. What are you going to do? Uh, coming out, you got to sit in this line and then you answer these border questions when you get there. You give them your passport. You wait for two and a half hours sometimes. That's the San Ysidro. The, the most, uh, that's the busiest border line in the world. And you know, it's like a city. Because when you're, if, if you've never gone across that border, they sell tacos, burritos, everybody, they clean your car. You can get everything done there. You can have lunch. Uh, you can actually uh, pay somebody to, well, you can e even go to the bathroom. They, you just jump out and there's little bathrooms. Uh, everything. I had my headlights clean there. Had a good lunch. Uh, you can buy things. They sell everything from... Uh, you know, food to clothing. So the borderline is also very popular with the dogs. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, hey, enough. I get so many complaints about you. The other day, let me tell you, I was doing an interview with Leo Zagami, my friend from Rome. Apparently, he's got a lot of people who follow it, and I get a lot of hits when I do an interview with him. Uh, hey, now that's why I'm getting complaints. Stop. Yeah, that's uh, why I'm getting complaints. And the, the guy says, I couldn't listen to that interview with Leo Zagami. There was dogs barking. And I said, tough. Did you hear what he said? He said, yeah. I said, then what are you worried about? This isn't, uh, you know, NBC studios here. We're running this show on a string and a prayer. So just be glad you could hear him. And if you don't like my dogs, don't listen to the show. That's all I tell people. 
because every now and then you're going to hear them and you're just going to have to put up with it so if not send me a lot of money and i'll do a, i'll build a nice little studio how's that what <laughs> do you think people send money in? hey there they go that's what okay so yeah i get a lot of complaints so you're just going to have to put up with it but anyway, uh, concordates, we're going to talk mostly about how the Vatican gets their sneaky little hands into uh, state governments, uh, countries, anything, just to see if they can push this one world order, one world religion. And we'll get to the strategies behind this, go back in history a little bit, so you can have some ammunition when you're talking this subject. But again, when you get onto that element of satanic worshiping in the Vatican, trust me from experience, that's a very difficult thing to talk to people about because they don't believe they can't fathom that this would go on in modern society and uh, let me tell you it does and let me tell you there's a lot worse than that if you ever just go into the stores and look at the milk cartons and all those kids on there where do you think they end up I'm not saying they all end up in the catacombs of the Vatican but they end up in pedophile rings they end up in many many uh, horrible situations and uh, you can thank the powers that be at the top levels for this uh, that's a difficult subject. Most people won't believe it. So, uh, you you know, do some research. And uh, when you talk about the Vatican, I find a lot of times it's good to, and there's very few. Like, uh, I've met a lot of Christians. Of course, they, they, they center on uh, the Bible and uh, the Protestant Reformation. I mean, there are millions of people killed. I can understand that. But... There's a whole element to the Vatican. A lot of people aren't going to buy that either. They'll just say that Christians are a bunch of lunatics. Uh, the Vatican's helped to spread that. Uh, and it's a religious thing that's over. That never would happen again. But uh, you can also realize that there's a whole element of political intrigue. And uh, I like to sometimes attack the Vatican from their finances and attack them from uh, what they're doing in governments and how they operate, how the Jesuits work behind the scenes still to this day. And what I always mention is this, you're going to deal with people who know about the Vatican, well most people don't to begin with, know about what we talk about here. But the ones that do, they're going to either really center on spirituality and Christianity and how the Catholic Church has persecuted them. And then there is a group of people that understand uh, how they operate in the secular world. And I find it very interesting because the people that are operate, that know about them and all their shenanigans in the secular world do not like to cross over into the Christian world, into the spiritual world. Then the people who know about all of their, uh, all of the things they do, like rewrite the Bible, change the Bible, change every, try to infiltrate all denominations, they don't want to get into the political element of the Vatican and the secular intrigue. And so what I recommend is that each one cross over into the other's world and know both sides. And then you can get a really good picture of what these people are all about. Now, before I get into uh, the strategy of Vatican concordates, or contracts, or treaties with countries, I very rarely do this, but I'm going to do it today. Uh, oh, wait, one thing I wanted to talk about, Elon Musk. We've all heard about Elon Musk. He's the one that wants to start SpaceX, take the first people to the moon, to Mars, and all these things. One problem, Elon, there is no space. So what are you doing? Most likely, he can't do it. So who is he? You know, I can bet if you look deep, you'll find some Jesuit connections. So, Elon, you got a great idea, but there maybe is no space. Probably is no space like we know it. You can't go to the moon, and you can't go to Mars because there is no Mars. How's that? So look into that, folks. And uh, you can also check NASA out. And they do the same damn thing. So all Musk is doing with all his money is uh, now privatizing this lie that NASA has been pushing on us for years. And guess what? People are already signing up to be the first ones to go. Interesting. Where are you going to go? Hit that big, huge, uh, yeah, take the, take the rocket up, hit the top of the wall, hit, hit the ceiling, and come back down. That would be a fun trip. So, Elon Musk. 
got that out of the way. But I very rarely do this, but I want to do it today. First of all, let me say that the American political system is a sham. Uh, in theory, it's great. You know, two great two parties. Uh, we seem to work things out the you know democratic fashion. Uh, we're the bastions of freedom, all that kind of stuff. But the problem is that both parties work together, and they utilize a, an old Jesuit trick called uh, the Hegelian dialectic, and that is to, on the surface, act like you're always at odds. Uh, Capitalism, you know, we're the Democrats, we want this, we're Republicans, and then you pick a side. But the real thing is they all work at the top together. And they're playing you, using you, and in the end, these two parties that seem to be fighting get what they want in the end, their synthesis. So if you look at what's going on today with Trump and the anti-Trumpers, uh, the Democrats who have now turned into Democrat socialists and the Republicans, they're doing that. The outcome is going to be a global world. We know that. That's what they're doing. And they're pushing all of the last semblance of Americans, the freedom fighters, the Republicans who want a closed borders, who want a nationalist country, who want capitalism to flourish, who want good jobs. Uh, they want to see America function the way it should. They're all out there in the open now fighting what seems to be about half the country now who's taking the other global approach. So the Jesuits have it really working well here putting these two groups together. But the real sad thing is when they rub them together and the end result is going to be a global world like they want. And you can bet your bottom dollar on that. One real good example is if the, the Republicans were true and what I was saying was false, then if you have a Republican Congress, Senate, White House, you should be able to get rid of Obamacare, right? and get back to a uh, system of, uh, you know, medical care that's privatized, not socialized, okay? But that's not happening. They didn't do anything. Why? Because they don't want to do anything. Because soon the Democrats will get back in and Obamacare will be there, and pretty soon you're going to have a global world. Now, as far as the border, you're hearing all these stories about, oh, we're going to build the wall, we're going to do all nothing. It hasn't been built. It's all rhetoric. And what will happen is this. They're now lining up people who want the wall against the people who don't want the wall. But in the end, there isn't going to be a wall. There isn't even going to be a border. So don't worry about it. All you millennium globalists out there are going to get your way in the end. And what you're going to find in the end, though, is not this kind of panacea world that you think, this great world where everybody gets along. You're going to have absolutely no rights and once they control everything, you will never be able to even leave this country. So you better get to like America, because they're not going to let you out. You watch. Now, I very, like I said, I very rarely do this. Take a mainstream article from one of the insiders and present the article in full. And then kind of piece it apart and show you why what I just said about capitalism and socialism and how they're rubbing it against each other now in America to get their way of, of globalism is a guy, many of you young people may not remember, his name is Newt Gingrich. He was a former Speaker of the House and uh, he's always on Fox News and he's, a, he's not only a, a, the Speaker of the House, he was the one who was the architect of what they called Contract with America that led Republican Party to a victory in 1994 uh, by capturing the majority in the U.S. House of Representatives and blah, blah, blah. And he's always on Fox News. He's also a supposed historian. His wife, by the way, is the ambassador to the Vatican. Yes, that's her position. So you know he's uh, right in bed with the Jesuits and always has been. And Newt plays the part of a conservative Republican. And in the article, he's playing his part quite well. And he's written an article that's going to prove to you that they are going to get their way and have socialism moved in by a globalist country uh, here in America. And you're not going to see uh, the Donald Trump people ever again have this kind of voice. 
and they're picking them out now and picking them off one by one and Newt Gingrich is standing in the Trump camp because he's a Republican but let's look at where he really is, who he really is he really works for his wife's the ambassador to the Vatican now and he's working with them for years because you always have to understand they have to have two sides always fighting abortion anti-abortion for the war against the war and in the end they get their way anyway right how many people who are against the Vietnam War most of the country and all these people the people that were for it were gung-ho America but and you would think because so many people were against the war we'd never have a war again right well we've had nothing but wars we're engaged in the biggest war in Afghanistan for the last 17 years. Do you realize we're still there? And you know the reason we're there? To protect the poppy fields. And we've done a number of stories on that. And they've had to move their drug operations to Afghanistan after the last place they were at had a drought. And this is when they started this years ago. Um, so it's very important that they keep the poppy fields going and then many of the American soldiers go to there to protect them so we're in Afghanistan 17 years so in the end if you put the Hegelian dialectic together with the Vietnam War you had the anti-war the war people and you would think that there would be no war because most people didn't realize this war was crazy and we should never get in one again but we got into even more and bigger ones because that's what they wanted that's the goal they wanted and they push that. Now, Gingrich is a Reaganite, worked with Reagan, and Reagan is a pro probably one of the biggest traitors we've ever had, even though most people will say we love Ronnie, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But he was the one who reestablished Vatican diploma diplomatic relations after they were cut off, after the you know, Patriots and our legislature back then understood the Vatican killed Lincoln. And so they said, we don't want anything to do with you anymore, but that's long forgotten. According to everybody, they've changed. Well, let me do this article on Gingrich. And I only have, I have to start it off in the second half hour because I only have a couple minutes. And I apologize if I can't get to concordance, but I did a whole show yesterday. I should be able to do a little bit. But I do want to get to this article to prove a point. You know, it brings you right to modern day American politics here. And I, like I said, I very rarely, if ever, take an article by one of these guys and go through it, piece it apart. And the reason is mostly I take little segments of what they say and piece it apart. Because I can't stand doing it for the whole, the whole article, to be honest with you. By the time I get to the fifth paragraph, I want to go throw up. But today I will bear with my, I will try to stop that from happening and get through this article done by one of the biggest Vaticanites, Jesuit infiltrators, working as a Republican. His wife is the ambassador now to Rome. That's a great job, isn't it? Ambassador to the greatest satanic organization in the world. What does she do? Uh, what do they do there? Hmm. Their job is to get, keep, make sure it never gets out, never gets told. And uh, you can bet they got journalists in Rome that work right with them. They're all together here. Let's not get these stories back to America. We may have a, a real problem. Oh, we can tell them about the pedophiles and everything because, uh, you know, everybody knows that these priests, because they're not married, are crazy. So uh, let's just leave it at that. Back in three minutes on the investigative journal.